Mark in the background. Oh man. He's, he's, he's supporting his man Mark. So uh, guys, we're getting ready to get started with Town of Tuesdays. I'm your host, Kai Speaks, aka Mr. Two and Five to Three O Five, aka One Chain. You know who it is. If you were watching the show last week, you recognize this face over here. We got Mark Made back in the building. What up, though? So go ahead, introduce yourself. Hey you man, I'm Mark Made. I ain't, I still ain't worked on my introduction, but uh, I make things. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm a rapper, entrepreneur, businessman, engineer, PhD candidate, and uh, your girlfriend's favorite. So, <laughs> so, so Mark was on the show last week. For those who are tuning in for the first time, Mark, uh, Mark was on the show last week, uh, and he was freestyling with the FIU artists and everything yeah, like that. We yeah. had the gang in the building. Uh, they gave us a quick freestyle. It was like sort of like a special. I was just bringing some of the greats back on the show to you know retell their stories. We like I said, we did the freestyle. Uh, so Mark is on the show for the first time to you know share his story. So he was on last week to freestyle, but now we're gonna learn a little bit more about you, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Um, so first, just tell us how you got into rapping and um, making beats and everything like that. Okay, so um, when about two years ago in 2016. Um, I met this dude named Lamar, mm -hmm. and uh, he goes by El Kendrell, Apple Music, Spotify, all of that. And um, he actually, uh, we actually was rap freestyling at his crib one time, and we was freestyling for like an hour, two hours, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So after which, I was just like, yo, bro, who made these beats? Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking with these beats. And he was just like, bro, I made all these beats. And he was like, bro, you need to start rapping. So we ended up forming a group called Apartment 5 mm -hmm. in 2017. And uh, we came out with an album. We about to drop another one. Mm -hmm. This is going to be iffy how that one works out. Okay. But um, we about to drop another one. But yeah, and then from there, um, uh, we was actually living in Apartment 5 at the same time. And um, when we moved out of Apartment 5, we, we all went solo also. And mm -hmm. from there, I just took what I learned and started making beats and uh, rapping, doing my own thing. Okay. So, yeah, I was really doing it all to promote choosing <laughs> at first. Um, that's why the whole first album mm -hmm. is called The Game of Choices because it's called Choosing okay. The Game of Choices. Okay. But um, now it's just, you know, free rapping. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's lit. It's lit. So, so, again, for the so for those who are watching Tell the Tuesdays for the first time, by the way, guys, I just want to let you know the comment section is open. You can feel free to ask questions, drop comments, or anything like that. But I will, however, mention to keep those comments positive, keep the negativity out of there, and everything like that. So you mentioned choosing. For those who are tuning in for the first time, just reiterate, tell us a little bit about what choosing All right, is. So choosing is for the people that's ready for the smoke. <laughs> I, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Uh, so choosing is basically cracking cards, and um, it's the uniquely kinky game that gives card tasks. So each card task um, tells you something to do, whether it's a dare, a rule, a game, or a quickie, and you have the choice of either doing the card or cheating and doing whatever you want. Mm -hmm. If you get caught cheating, Doing whatever you want, you have to drink or strip. It's that simple. So if you basically, if you're like one of those great liars, those sly foxes, the game is perfect for you because no one's gonna ever call you out, mm -hmm. and it's like super strategic. You can get whatever you. If you want to get people drunk, you want to get people naked. If you want to get drunk, if you want to get naked, you can do it all in this game. And like, there's nothing super duper crazy. Like, I think the worst card may be um, suck a nipple. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that's the worst card. Most cards are just simple things like uh, kiss the person to your left, mm -hmm. uh, massage the person to your right. But it depending on where you're sitting depends on how crazy things can be. Right, so, right, right. It's an awesome game. Definitely check it out. Uh, it's www.cho.sinusa.com. Uh, the games run for 15 bucks. And you can support your local artists. Mm -hmm. Losers, yes. Definitely. Always, <laughs> we need that. Always show the support. <laughs> so what made you guys what made you start um like create this game? Oh, actually uh, it started because I wanted to have a first impression or create a better first impression for my homies back in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was one of the more popular kids on campus, <laughs> go figure. Uh and um I wanted to create like this strategy game because I was even though I was one of the cool ones. The homies I was hanging out with, most of the people didn't know them a lot, so mm -hmm. I wanted to get them some more clout or whatever, you know okay. what I'm saying, just so then, and we loved to party, like mm -hmm. kickbacks, like we didn't really do clubs in Atlanta, so mm -hmm. we was always on kickbacks, we was like, yo, it'll be something, something would be cool, instead of playing Ring of Fire all the time, let's create our own game, mm -hmm. so created this, um, it worked wonders, like, you know, first impressions was going through the roof, if you can imagine what that means, and, uh, yeah, people was really falling in love temporarily, and it was, <laughs> it was lovely, but now, um, I've actually partnered with, um, DJ Mari, 
who's right there holding my phone. That's it. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, so he's one of the investors in the game and we're both trying to work together to get this out in the market. Right, right. So have you thought about, you know, marketing to like, you know, stores like Walmart, Target? Oh, absolutely. That is literally my personal end goal. Like mm -hmm. if I can get it, Walmart is the main one, but right. if I can get in like a Hot Topic, mm -hmm. a Spencer's, Hot a Topic Target, you know what I'm saying? That would be lovely. So mm -hmm. if any of y'all know how to do that, hit your boy up. We are literally looking for great marketing schemes mm -hmm. and marketing analysis whatever so that we can get that i was just about to ask do you know like what like where to even start you know the how to even market man to those corporations and stuff that that is other than just emailing them and wishing mm -hmm. for the best you know what i'm saying we form the llc we have the website we have the actual product mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying both you got the instagram page too instagram that facebook the you know way. and um it's just like I know those are like the common ways, but mm -hmm. I'm sure there is an effective way, and one that we have to actually venture into is um, getting more visuals for. It. You right. know, I get I get little choosing photos. That's when someone takes a photo like this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we need actual like visual commercial quality yeah. type thing, so then people can see it and be like, oh, you know, this is this is lit. Um, yeah, that's that's probably our next big step, but that's what I think we need to work on with our marketing. Mm -hmm. So for those guys who are and gals who are watching Town of Tuesdays and you always on every week, I know this is not your first time hearing about choosing. You heard about it last week when Mark brought it up. You even heard it about when we had DJ Mario on the show. So if you heard it again and you still have not bought the choosing, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm about to say it's about Do that you time where party. you party exactly. It's about that time where you just you know go to www choosingusa.com and just cop a cop a deck of cards right there get you, you right one there. today <laughs> get you a deck of cards y'all so all right so you mentioned how you started rapping and you yeah. know you used your first album or mixtape what, what do you call it? Uh, album? Uh, album. Yes, okay album. so you used your first album to basically market choosing mm -hmm. now where does where does the other stuff that you go uh you do go into play because you also are a phd candidate right yes and yes. engineering is your focus uh yes okay yes. so like where does that come into play uh so whew, uh, so the whole reason why i'm here in miami actually right. is because of the phd mm -hmm. um i met dr montaz hunter shout out dr montaz hunter at fiu um at a conference while I was researching, I was doing a presentation on solar panels. Oh. And uh, she saw me and was just like, hey, you know, we love your energy and all that. We would love for you to come to FIU. So mm -hmm. um, they basically, she was dead serious, flew me down here, bribed me with women in heat and sand and beaches and all that, and alcohol and strippers. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. Anyways, uh, bribed me with all that good stuff. Uh, I came down here and was working on just the engineering degree, mm -hmm. uh, the future graduate degrees. Mm -hmm. And um, how it works into all of this, uh, that's how I'm able to fund everything, actually. Mm. Uh, because I'm under a multitude of fellowships. Um, the Gym Fellowship, the... McNair is um, one of them? McKnight, actually. McKnight. So, I, so I always get those uh, Yeah, McNair is for confused. undergrad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If y'all are an undergrad, you need to apply. But um, the McKnight Fellowship, the Dolores A.L. Zine Fellowship, um, Startup FIU gave me one before. And um, my original was the National Science Foundation Bridge to the Doctorate. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, if y'all don't know what a fellowship is, it's a scholarship with a contract. So they'll pay for your whole, they pay you and they get, or they give you a stipend and they waive your tuition. So basically you go to school for free as long as you get the 3.0 and keep maintaining that and they pay you also. Mm -hmm. uh, big money, big money. So um, yeah, that, I do my research, you know, in the daytime, go to lab, um, and and night and day, the other half of the day, I'm working on choosing, rapping, and supporting friends that I hate, and um, yeah, just trying to make magic. Yeah, so is that, <laughs> I definitely mentioned you bringing up the fact of using other people's money to, you know, support your dreams yeah. and your goals and everything like that, which is always, it's something that you always want to do, y'all. Especially <laughs> yes, in school, it is. use other people's money to go to school. <laughs> yes, it is. Everybody else do it, why not you? <laughs> so I think what's interesting about you, Mark, is, you know, when it comes to like rapping yes. and music production and everything <laughs> like that, a lot of people get confused as if, you know, especially where I'm from, people mm -hmm. think you, you get into rap because either you weren't school was never your thing yeah so people tell you you know or you you were just always told school's not your thing yeah. so you just get into rapping <laughs> yeah. or you basically that so yeah, you know yeah. but you was different because 
obviously you already got the undergrad under your belt mm -hmm. and then now you're pursuing a PhD. So tell us about that dynamic of, you know, being a PhD student and then also being a rapper slash entertainer yeah. and then how those come together. Absolutely. So um, I was just talking with Freddie on this, uh, Freddie Julie, mm -hmm. dope uh, FIU artist. Um, so I kind of did it backwards. It's not that I felt like I couldn't do school mm -hmm. or engineering. It was more so I didn't know if I would be able to do the rapping mm -hmm. because I was doing school in right, engineering. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I let kind of society haunt me for a few years, a good amount. Because I've always known how to freestyle and rap, but I actually didn't record my first song until I was 26. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm 27 now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's It was just one of those things where it was just the reverse, like that Benjamin Button mm -hmm. style. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I ain't gonna lie, I forgot the damn question. Um, <laughs> like how you, 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 you kind of answered it, so this is, I guess, is a two part question, mm -hmm. so to better elaborate, you know, because, you know, what you just mentioned is the case for a lot of other people, too. Yes. That other half, the people who don't get into rap because they're the, yeah. the scholars and they say, yeah. hey, I'm in the school, I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not about that life, so I might as well not rap. Yeah. Because people think you have to be about a certain life yeah, to exactly. get into exactly. that industry. So, you know, elaborate more on that to how you even. What made you, I know you mentioned, you know, apartment 11 or apartment, apartment 5. Apartment, apartment 5, five yeah. So you, I know you mentioned that, but I guess the, the question is, you have an interest in so many different things. Yeah. How do you scope out what your passions are and how do you stay focused on all those passions that you had? Uh, I think it's to, you got to take a step towards at least one. Mm -hmm. You know, once you take a step towards one, you can realize, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then you do that for so long. And you're like, okay, I'm comfortable doing this. I'm going to keep elevating this, but now I'm going to step over here into something else I had. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like me, I've always, like I said, I always known how to rap. Uh, I just never really did it. Mm -hmm. And instead I did, you know, the, the academia route, the engineering route, the choosing route. And eventually when I got comfortable with all those things, I was like, you know what? I might be able to do this rapping thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like uh, the route I took allowed me, you know, a lot of people think, they think you gotta be hard, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be talking guns and robbing and violence and all this stuff with the rap. But really, I think taking another path allows you to explore your creativity, your imagination. Like in none of my raps, there's one song I, I mentioned drugs, but I mentioned it from the standpoint of why you should not do drugs. Yeah, I remember, I, I yeah. heard it was kind of like, you know, like a parody. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a huge parody, it's called Cutting Up, but um, <laughs> Other than that, like most of the things I'm talking about, I mean, of course I talk about women because we all associate with that. But uh, outside of that part, um, I, I talk, I say a lot of geeky references, a lot of uh, anime references, whether you play video games, watch anime, you know what I'm saying, had a childhood, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I kind of reference those things and put them into a context of who I am now, mm -hmm. you know? So people, I don't necessarily talk about, oh, I got the, I, let's, I shoot dudes, like I got shooters. But I will say I got shooters in regards to, let's say, gummy shots. You know what I'm saying? So I, I kind of like use entendres and different phrases, kind of mix and match, bring the worlds together. And that's only because I took that route. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't really talk about the, oh, I got drugs on deck, you know what I'm saying? Guns on mm -hmm. deck, because I, I don't live that life. Right. And um, I don't got no writers or anything. And then you got a lot of people who don't live that life, but even still get caught up in that's what you yeah. have to talk about to get into this yeah. industry. So, um, so your route kind of reminds me of, you know, the, the success of 2 Chainz. Cause you know, two chains went to school, played ball in school, yeah. and he well, he ain't blow up until what he was like, he was like 30. thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you know, and then you got a lot of younger guys who blow up at nineteen, but then five mm -hmm. years later, where are they? Yeah. So you know, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people say this the right way. Yes. But you showing you, you, you yeah. look at two chains route. You know, he he got he, he's building a lot, a big name for himself. He got a lot going. So I mean, you have anything to elaborate on that? Oh uh, yeah, I feel like um, people have to trust in. Their process. I hate to be so corny with that. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, but yeah, you you truly gotta trust in your own process because there's a lot of ways of getting the clout and a lot of ways of getting um, the audience that you want. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people, you just want the audience. You don't care what the audience is, and I think that's big in qualifying your audience instead of quantifying mm -hmm. it because you can be talking all this, this, and that, and then when you get around those environments. 
you're going to seem like a fake, you know what I'm saying? And even though there's a lot of fakes in the industry, I'm, I'm sure, you know, uh, I, you shouldn't go that route because I feel like that's what starts chipping away at yourself, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, at your soul or whatever. And you don't ever want to corrupt who you are to attain something that you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You might not necessarily even need to be in that position. You right. know, like I, me per, me personally, I'm, I'm okay if I never get uh, a million followers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if I get, I don't know, a hundred here, a hundred k here, a hundred k here, or fifty k, ten k here, 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 that's still enough for me to do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, because loyalty is. Another corny line, loyalty is everything. But at the same time, you have to trust who you are and not change who you are. So then you'll feel better about yourself when you do attain whatever you're going for. Yeah, I remember talking to Courtney when I had him on the show. We were talking about, you know, a lot of people are focused on, you know, getting to that one million mm -hmm. instead of focusing on what they have, who they have yes. right in front of yes, them. But if you focus on who you have shout right in front of you, yeah, shout out K Kid for that advice. But if you focus on who in front of you, you know, those people are going to truly be involved in what you're involved Absolutely. in. And then they're Absolutely. going to bring other people with them to be involved in that journey with you. So if you if you got a talent, don't be afraid to at least start the process now. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Once you start that process, continue. If you're in school, continue doing the school. Like, do everything at once because we're millennials. Like, it's not like back in the old days where you could do one thing mm -hmm. and be successful. Now, everyone's doing one thing. Right. So you have to do two things, three things, you know what I'm saying, to kind of show your diversity, your variety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely, so definitely, definitely agree with that. explore all your talents. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, that's as you explore all those talents, you start to find out, you know, hey, I'm good at this. Yeah. But that's not necessarily something that I'm passionate about. Exactly. Because, you know, a lot of people, they take so long to, you know, try new things. And then they realize that they're not, they don't even like doing that one thing. Exactly. And you, you took, you took five to ten years to even get started on that one thing just to take another five years to discover that you don't even like exactly. doing it. Exactly. And that's just as important, realizing what you don't want mm -hmm. versus what you do want. Exactly. Because there's people out here that want all sorts of crazy things just to get it and be like, yo, nah, this was whack. That's a lot of wasted time. <laughs> it's a lot of wasted time. A lot of wasted once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, are you, so are you from Atlanta? Uh, so I was born in Detroit, raised in Atlanta. So okay. uh, I moved to Atlanta when I was 10. Okay. And then from there, I grew into the savage I am today. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, you can say that. So Detroit is a lot different than Atlanta, but both Detroit and Atlanta are a lot different to Miami. When yes. you came down to Miami, how, what was it like, you know, trying to stay true to who you are and not getting lost in that, mm. that atmosphere of being in Miami? That sauce. Yeah. Um, so the one thing, actually, when I came down to Miami, I actually hated it. Uh, I, like you could feel the fakeness <laughs> in the air. Like you could just smell it. And like what, what got on my nerves. So in Atlanta, um, there's like a tier, you know, so you can scale mm -hmm. everything. There's cookouts, pool parties, or kickbacks, or excuse me, cookouts, kickback, pool parties. Mm -hmm. And then it's club and everything else. Mm -hmm. When I came here, people put clubs as number one yeah you know what i'm saying so i'm i'm a kickback person and i'm sitting here like yo people are like oh y'all throwing a kickback how many people in there you be like oh yeah it's like 15 you know what i'm saying like seven girls eight dudes or vice versa you know what i'm saying they'll be like all right i might show up mm -hmm. in atlanta me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, me, in Atlanta, that's... you say kickback. Everyone and their cousin and mama are showing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you have a deep little party. You know what I'm saying? Everything vibing like it, everything's cool. But here, they don't like you can say, hey, pool party, music video. Like, I want you in it. And Atlanta, everywhere else, they're like, oh, music video? I'm about to show up. Like, you've seen Takashi 6 9 videos. Like, I don't really, yeah. I don't really mess with one of his yeah. artists. But if you look at his videos, he got like 70, 80 people in it. That's because you send a text message. And they'll be like, oh, you doing a music video? I'm coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like that in Atlanta, too. Here, bro, just to get three people, you know what I'm <laughs> saying? You got to literally show the cooked food with, like, a naked chick and a free dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it got to come with Chick-fil-A, my pleasure. Like, literally, you got to have a sign. So, it, it's crazy. But that's why I didn't like it here because I felt like people was living up to a scene mm -hmm. that wasn't meant for them like they, they right. wanted the club scene but they didn't dance they didn't holler at people they, that's the worst. they didn't even want to buy drinks but you wanted to go to the club Why that's the worst when you go to a club and ain't nobody dancing so it's like now you just yeah like it's like come get somebody. sniped bro like, <laughs> come, come get sniped so all right so what would you would you say that it has something to do with you know who you are as well because you know i feel like down Absolutely. here 
is very absolutely. clicky. And if yeah. you don't know certain people, that may be a that yeah, may be a, a vital uh, piece of the puzzle as well. Absolutely. So Miami, in my opinion, is one of the most segregated places mm -hmm. in the world. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just simply because even though we have all these cultures here, mm -hmm. people only really associate with their main culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I rarely, I'm just now starting to see like. Uh, Haitians hang out with Jamaicans and Jamaicans hang out with African Americans and African Americans hang out with blacks and then them hanging out with Caucasians mm -hmm. Caucasians hanging out with Cubans like people tend to click up specifically to their exact nationality mm -hmm. right whereas in a place like Atlanta like if you said hey I'm Haitian but I'm not black someone would literally probably slap you you know what I'm saying because it just don't exist like if you are, you got melanin, you black. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you're Hispanic, you're Hispanic. If you're Asian, you're Asian. Here, mm -hmm. I've literally heard people say, I'm not, you know what I'm saying, this, uh, I'm Japanese, I'm Chinese. And it's like, they don't associate with the whole other mm -hmm. Asian culture, you yeah. know? And I feel like that's, I don't know, that's a step in the wrong direction, mm -hmm. you know? Cause it's like, at the end of the day, if you black, you know what I'm saying? If, at the end of the day, if it was a white cop in front of us, you want to go ahead and lay some shells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He ain't gonna pick and choose. Mm. If it's just blacks, whites, and whatever, he gonna be like, well, I'm gonna go ahead and holler at these people real quick, mm. load it up, yeah, yeah, let's get it popping. <laughs> so that's actually, so it's funny you mentioned that because yeah. I find myself bringing that up oftentimes. Like, me and Herson had this conversation, mm -hmm. a couple other people had this conversation, how, like, where I'm from, Philly, just like you said, oh, Atlanta, yeah. no, everything definitely. is black and white, and everything else just kind of falls into peripheral. If they'll try to just group it as black or they're just trying to be yes, white. Yes. And then oftentimes you got, you know, Asian. But you yes. know, people don't try and separate separate the different Asians either. They just group them as Asian. Yeah. So when you get down here, there's no such thing as just black and white anymore. So yeah. It's it's Asian, Jamaican, Dominican, yeah. Cuban is a whole lot of <laughs> yeah. different components you gotta add to it. Yes. What do you focus on with, with engineering? I know last week you were talking yes. about, you know, Lithium, yes. air lithium batteries. Yes. So, um, tell us a little bit about what that so is. So, I once again I do uh, PhD research in mechanical engineering, uh, researching lithium air batteries. So, basically, in our phones, uh, we use lithium batteries. Uh, mm -hmm. If you got a super high tech phone that shouldn't even be on the market yet, you're probably using lithium ion. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For the Tesla vehicles, they use lithium ion. Mm -hmm. So how the scale works, at the bottom, there's regular lithium. That's the ones where if you want your phone to just catch fire on that plane and you want to blow that mug up, like go ahead and get that. Um, then you got the higher uh, class, which is lithium ion, which is slightly more safe. Um, it has a higher energy, can last longer. Those are the Tesla vehicles, the electric vehicles. Then you have lithium polymer which basically use like a, a soft flexible film in between two edges, the two electrodes, the anode and the cathode. Mm -hmm. And that improves the security, uh, stops it from like uh, having explosions and all that. It just minimizes all those mm -hmm. things. I specifically work with gel polymer electrolytes in lithium air. So the theoretical energy of lithium air batteries is about the equivalent of the specific or the specific energy of lithium air batteries is about the same as the specific energy of gasoline. Now I know this sounds extremely geeky, but um, nah, keep your mind. I'm gonna be asking because <laughs> yeah. like I was super intrigued and like when you was talking about yeah. it at first, I'm gonna save my question for next week. When, yeah. So you know, so so, free. so the specific energy of gasoline, uh, I believe, is twelve point two kilowatt hours and. Um, Lithium air theoretically is 11.7, mm. but when you look at them practically how they are around the world right now, they're both 1.7 kilowatt hours. So they're like, well, why should we even use gasoline if we have something that can be recharged, cleaner for the environment, and you know what I'm saying, mm. and we can do the same thing, it has the same uh, specific energy. So I work with lithium air batteries, and to go one step further than that, we have gel polymer electrolytes which is basically like, um, we like to put like, it was a polymer, so it's like a thin, soft, jello-like film that's in between that kind of like improves the transfer of the electrons between the two edge, the two sides of the battery, mm -hmm. the anode and cathode, mm -hmm. and that's all it is. So basically it's just a faster moving, uh, safer version of a lithium battery. Okay. And that's what we, that's what I'm actually mm -hmm. creating. And how did you get into that field? Like, uh, what, what started your interest in engineering, and what started your oh, yeah. your, your yeah, focus into the lithium air batteries? Um, 
So I, I have a fetish with energy, uh, mm -hmm. as weird as that sounds. And uh, I actually believe God is energy. You know what I'm saying? Like God is pure energy. And um, that's because, you know, energy can't be created nor destroyed. So I think God can't mm -hmm. be created nor destroyed. Right. But anyway, I, that's yeah, a whole yeah. other story. You're going to talk uh, about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I have a fetish with energy. Um, mm -hmm. I actually only went to school because I just want to make shit. You know, I thought school was that that way I could just make stuff. Like mm -hmm. I thought there was a way we can just do prototypes and all that. And um, ended up getting into school, finding out that um, the school won't help you make anything. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, now that I'm going to grad school, I might as well uh, work with energy. Um, like I said, I was in an undergrad doing a presentation with solar panels, and um, Dr. Montaz Hunter walked up to me. and was like, hey, you know, consider going to FIU. We can. We need energy. You seem perfect. Came to the school. Uh, the first semester, I was doing stuff with uh, turning food waste into fuel, mm -hmm. and uh, none of the advisors, none of the teachers, really wanted to pick me up from that. So then I was like, "All right, in order to graduate, I gotta work with these stupid ass teachers, and um, I'll work with these batteries because I always want to do electric vehicles." You were doing that here, the yes. turning food waste. Yes. Unit? Yeah. Okay. And I was like, "All right, I want to work with electric vehicles." That's why I was doing food waste because mm -hmm. you know hybrid vehicles and stuff. And it was like, well, this is lithium batteries, still energy. I was just like, all right. And then that's how I got into the battery mm -hmm. section. So, I mean, it's been working out so far. I just recently did my proposal. Uh, so now it's nothing but dissertation and making the PowerPoint so that I can present that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's like consuming a lot of your time, you know, getting all that. So how do you, I know it's, I know it's hard to explain because you can't really, I don't want to say manage, but for lack of a better yeah, word, yeah. how do you manage, manage your time? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you got the so, dissertation, but you still got a lot of stuff. Yeah, that you're trying to uh, push. you just kind of got to, me personally and mm -hmm. everyone out there, you kind of got to just convince yourself to be productive at as much as you can. Mm -hmm. You know, like I used to play video games all the time. Uh, I literally cut video games down to like, if that was like 50%, that's down to like five percent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I like I say, I work on things like this. Um, once you get a hold of the experimental process, um, things get easier. You know, once you learn how to do the test, how to make the batteries, how to run the analysis, you know how to do it in you know faster times. Mm -hmm. So literally, I only go to lab. I go to lab every day, five days a week, but um, only from like twelve to three thirty. Four, you know what I'm saying? Because once you start running the test, you don't need to be in there all the time. And then me personally, I have like a three to four hour max limit where I can just work straight, get everything done. And then mm -hmm. outside of that four hours, though, I don't, I'm like, I'm not on Facebook and all that stuff while I'm doing that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just maximizing your productivity so that you can do other things. Because once you maximize your productivity, oh, you can do this. You know what I'm saying? You can do that and you'll be doing it all effectively. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying get on a routine, but sometimes routines help. Mm -hmm. Just like when you wake up, brush your teeth, you know what I'm saying, shower, all that stuff. If you make a routine out of things, it gets faster, you get better at it, and then you're able to have more time for other things. Yeah, I will also say to piggyback on that, routines definitely help. But you know, don't be uh don't don't shoot yourself in the forward. Don't be like so obsessed and <laughs> because if your if your routine doesn't work out one day, you know, yeah. it's not the end of the world. So, you know, what's your schedule like, you know? Cause you, you're in the lab Monday through Friday, say mm -hmm. like 12 to 3.30. Mm -hmm. Well, when you wake up, from the time you wake up to the time you know, you're know ready to start the next day, what, what are some of the things that you're getting ready, you're thinking about for the next day? Or what are oh, some yeah. things that you're thinking about that you could do for the day ahead? Oh yeah, so if everyone knows, if anyone knows me in this moment, I know I'm not known like that. Uh, I like to party. So because I like to party, I say those hours from like 11 to three, you know what I'm saying? That's like party time, whenever that's available. That's always ready, hit me up today. Uh, uh, as for the lab, of course, and stuff, I do that from 12 to three. Sometimes that goes over, you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's first priority. And um, okay. yeah, sometimes that's first priority. But then as for choosing, I literally work on choosing. I can work on that any time of the day because mm -hmm. I've, I've done so much work on it now. Like I have it linked to my phone. So if mm -hmm. I think of a new card idea, uh, I meet someone in regards to like marketing, as I told you earlier. Um, whatever it is, I'm writing those ideas down in my phone at all times. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I stay productive with this. And then when I get free time, I just edit it right then and there. I try to do stuff like right then and there. Uh, when it comes to music, music is time consuming because um, me, I produce the beats, I engineer the beats. You know what I'm saying? I write the lyrics, I rap the lyrics. Um, 
that is actually that can be hours of time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I don't do all of it at the same time. So I might produce the beat one day and then just write the lyrics or engineer a song and record the lyrics of another one. You know what I'm saying? Just to kind of stick with the the mojo and get everything going. And Mari Mari said he got some questions on his end. Fuck y'all gotta ask me. Um, so on the topic of money, yeah. How much did you invest? How did you get the money to invest? Who asked it? Just in case I got some snitches out there. <laughs> Ask the question. Uh, so what? Say it one more time. Um, how much did you invest? Into how what? did you get the money to invest? Into what? Just in general? Into anything? Into. Let's just say anything. anything. Uh, so I got the money from fellowships. Now, that's basically why I'm here now under the PhD candidacy. Um, fellowships can range anywhere from three thousand to five thousand to ten thousand to twenty thousand, thirty thousand. My first fellowship, it was thirty thousand dollars a year for two years, off rip, just to go to school. Now you're talking about a dude who was playing basketball, video games, clubbing, talking to women. You know what I'm saying? Doing all these things, parties, and all these things in Atlanta, and and had a part time job and still graduated. And now I had to come to school, uh, grad school in Miami. And grad school, in order to be a full-time student, you have to be, um, you have to take three classes and for nine credit hours total, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? So school, I went from taking six, seven classes a semester to just taking three, and I could still do the same things. Oh, when you take away those classes, you got a lot of free time. So anyways, the fellowship was given the money, and um, total, I put at least, about ten to fifteen thousand in choosing alone. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's choosing music. I I put a great deal of money into. Um, outside of that, you know, you don't really have to put money into the school because the school pays for everything. Like school is paid for travel, business trips. Um, get those fellowships. <laughs> what advice do you have for people who don't have the money or feel like they don't? Um, that's a good question. As someone told me. Um, God has placed everything in your hands. You're just not using it right. So you may not have the funds, but you may have the resources. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you got to take that extra heed to actually check out your resources. You know what I'm saying? Like when I first dropped my album and choosing, I literally promised myself and DJ Mari that I would text every person in my phone. And I did. I literally sent the, a, the same message, like not as a group, not like 20 people at a time, one by one to 950 people mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and it, it, it worked out a little bit you know it didn't work out for everybody but it's something that's just one thing you got to do mm -hmm. and to even piggyback off of that um to help people better understand what mark's saying like you got artists or even anybody who does some kind of service and they say i'm no longer doing this for free a lot of people don't understand that you were never doing it for free in the first place yeah. because even though you may not get paid monetary you know, you're getting paid with contacts, you're getting paid with connections, yeah. you're getting paid with yeah. a network. There are people that are going to be there that are always going to be watching you. So you may have done something for free money wise, mm -hmm. but there are going to be people there that are watching and say, hey, I could use your services here or hey, we could we could network here. You may end up, it may lead to another gig that may be paid. Yeah, absolutely. So, like you said, you got to mm -hmm. you got to look into how you're using your resources and everything like that. Yeah, I mean, how many more questions we got over there, Mark? How important is having fun? Last one. Oh <laughs> my gosh, that is the number one thing to do. Uh, you have to have fun. That's how you stay sane. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you if you just one of those people that just go to school, just go to work, and then you go back home, you're going to fall into insanity. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to be getting tired of shit. And then I know some people do that just because they're working towards something. Now, working towards something is different than just doing work in school. Like if you're working towards, oh, I'm about to go on this Jamaica trip, so. I'm going to work for two uh, two weeks in a row so I can go mm -hmm. do that. That's working towards something. Mm -hmm. If you just working, going back home, you ain't going out, you ain't drinking. Like, I have a lot of different versions of fun, you know what I'm saying? So, um, just having a hobby can be fun. Like, productivity and, is And fun. working to pay bills isn't... Oh, yeah. That's no, not yeah. working towards something. No, that. that's not working. That's, that's something working. you have to do yeah. to live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you got to have fun. Actually, what's funny about that... My best semesters in school were the uh, semesters where I partied six days a week. Literally, like my GPA was like a 3.91. I was getting scholarships, all this. And I had one semester, I was just like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to focus on school because 
I wonder if I'm partying all this time and I get a 3.91, if I focus on school, I can get a 4.0. Right. Ended up getting like a, <laughs> I got like a 2.9, you know, yeah, 2.9, I didn't get no scholarships, and I was like, yo, bump this, started partying, coming into school, uh, coming into class late every day, but I was finishing tests first, ended up coming back out with a 3.9. Now, now, recognize, you got to understand, and they, that may not work for you, <laughs> yeah, no, I went to school no, yeah. with some people who partied every day, you know what I'm saying, they had yeah, 1.7s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you so know, you got to realize you gotta it know works it works but partying is, is big for me, because I like having fun, I like meeting people, mm -hmm. like, just like how I believe uh, productivity and work and um, success and connectivity, like connecting with others is extremely important, like if you want to get somewhere, you can, you can work hard. I also believe that connecting with others can get you at the same point. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think we've seen that in our society, at least in America, mm -hmm. that you don't have to do anything in that field as long as you know the right person. And you can get just as far as someone who has done a PhD. Right. You know, so it's, you literally have to, and that's my fun, the connecting. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, my fun is not the working hard. I like to, but I like to connect because I like to, I want to make sure that I'm not, I'm not losing out on something. Right. You know, I want to make sure that okay, I'm throwing parties because yeah, I got, a, I got a party game, or I'm over here going to these little rap festivals and everything, kicking in people, celebrities, whoever you want to call, because I, I want to, I'm in that field. You know what I'm saying? That's fun to me. Mm -hmm. Instead of just working on my craft and staying dormant the whole time. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to show yourself. You got to come out that hole sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate everybody on Marksby who asked yes, those great thank questions, you. those thank good you. questions. Um, so uh, over here, uh, if you guys are still tuned in, I see some people tuned in. Uh, these start wrapping up your last minute questions. We're getting ready to wrap up the show in a little bit. Um, we do have one question. Where did you do your undergrad at? Uh, I did my undergrad at Kennesaw State University in mm -hmm. Georgia. Uh, it was originally called Southern Polytechnic State University before they merged with Kennesaw State University. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, yeah, it's lit. Shout out KSU. So were you there when they went through that merger? I actually had graduated under Southern Polytechnic State okay. University and then they merged like the next year. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so, so I was getting ready to ask you, how was, what was it? Do you, so, I mean, were you still going to the school and everything? Oh, no, no. So I was already down here by the time oh, okay, they did okay. it. But like, they was talking about it. They was doing big talks about mm -hmm. it. And uh, it was nothing that was crazy. Like, the engineering campus was still my main campus. Mm -hmm. You know, um, now if I was doing something like business or whatever, then it would have probably been drastic because then my classes would have moved over right. like a whole 10 miles. But mm -hmm. they was accommodating people. You know what I'm saying? They had buses and all that stuff. Okay. Y'all straight. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> you better ride that cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, so guys, seeing no extra questions, I'm gonna give you just a little bit more time. I'm gonna ask my last question for Mark, and that's a question I ask every week, uh, which is the red pill, blue pill. Okay. So, if you take the red pill, you go forward 10 years, but you have $5 million liquid in your bank account. Okay. Now, you take the blue pill, you go backwards 10, uh, 10 years, but you know everything that you know now. Which pill are you taking? Well, I know a lot of stupid motherfuckers want to go back in the past uh, and act like they're going to be the one to create the internet and shit. I don't see that. I don't see me creating the internet. I can see me having the idea for it, mm -hmm. but it ain't going to work out like that. Uh, give me the, what you say, five million, ten million? Five, five, five mil, ten years. Oh, five mil, ten years. Because I already know five mil, ten, five, it's five million dollars. Like, you, you not, if you go into the past, your stupid ass is changing the past. <laughs> with your knowledge. Therefore, you're also going to change your now future, you idiot. So if you, <laughs> so if you take five million in the future, now you're five million dollars richer, you idiot. So right. you can do, you can work with all of that. Yeah, that's, that's so, common. So, that's so, 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 so did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Mario took the blue pill. <laughs> no, but I'm sure it did. Man, man. I'm gonna be Bill Gates. I'm gonna create the internet. I'm gonna start social media. I, I took the Don't blue pill. Don't even know how to code. Too. <laughs> when, I first, when I first started asking these questions, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go with the blue pill. But, you know, some people bring that perspective, you know, when they say the red pill, they give you uh, the perspective. Nah, like, why? Yeah. You know, so I think, that, I don't know. I might yeah, that's guys sitting there like, watch this stupid <laughs> shit. Watch this stupid, you know what I'm saying? No, you ain't going to oh, get me, bro. Because think about it. Even if you wanted to, say, create the first social media, mm -hmm. right, you wouldn't even know how to code it. Because the little process of how to code it didn't exist. The templates. Plus, and you know everything you know now. Yeah. So you, if yeah. you don't know it now, so you, you don't know, know it now. now. You gotta go back and learn something. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> you should do now. <laughs> Let me take your coins, bruh. Give me my five million in ten years. Oh man. <laughs> I'm late. I'm gonna be what uh, 37 millionaire? <laughs> man, please. You know what could oh, man please? That's gonna be crazy. You said that's a no-brainer. Oh my God. That's a no-brainer. So alright, y'all. So seeing no extra questions on the feed. We don't have no extra questions right there, right, Mark? Oh, no, I'm good. All right, so seeing no extra uh, extra questions on the feed, Mark, now it's your time you know, plug yourself in at, uh, give everybody who's yes. tuned in where they can find you at and everything like that. So the name is Mark Made. That's M-A-R-C dot period made, M-A-D-E. I'm on social media, um, Instagram, Facebook. I'm on Spotify, iTunes, Tidal, Apple Music, you name it. Um, I produce engineer record and write my own stuff so if you ever just feel like you got an urge for a song and you want a feature i'm going to destroy your beat but uh if you just want to work i'm around fiu two miles away come through if you want to talk about how to get fellowships scholarships you need connections to the higher ups around fiu i can put you in contact with those you interested in grad school flying bikes um Choosing marketing investments. I can tell you everything. I'm not one of the people that's shy to tell you everything I know You know what I'm saying cuz I feel like that's how you elevate. I mean, I'm glad you did mention the flying bike So I know I know <laughs> yeah. it's in development. So tell yeah. us what you can tell us real quick before we go about the uh, flying bike. So shout out to Ascend Aeronautics. That's A-S-S-E-N Aeronautics mm -hmm. um, Basically, we created a flying bike. So we had the luxury of um, Actually showcasing it in the GT pit about three four months ago and since then we've got it up flying around uh actually when we were doing our last test our stabilizing test about a week ago some grad students from um happened to come and witness it and they were just like yo we want to put this in our grad studies and they got to see it flying and all that so um i came about that because i went to something called nerd night mm -hmm. in miami and i, I that's just i went there because i was a black dude and i wanted to see what nerds look like in miami because they seem to not exist and uh, they didn't exist. Everyone there was fucking real estate, <laughs> uh, except for like five people who was actually nerds. And um, yeah, they apparently I was one of the talks of the, the town and they gave my information to another guy who was there looking for actual nerds. And uh, he hit me up was like, hey, bro, I heard you work with batteries. I got a flying bike. Was good, and I was just like, Man, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's see, let's see how it really is. And he was dead serious, and uh, yeah, I've been working with him, just helping him out from time to time since October of last year. Hey, so uh, yeah, up. you're gonna be seeing a lot of stuff coming with that real mm -hmm. song. We we song. holding it off because you know you got people like you know the Titans, like Google doing mm -hmm. stuff like that, Uber doing stuff like that, uh, probably even Amazon, and um, we ain't trying to face the Titans yet. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But uh, so we we working on how we wanna we wanna market that. But yeah, it's it's up and running. It's flying. I got videos on my phone to prove it. Mm -hmm. If you see me around, just hey, it's like hey, let me see that flying bike. Boom, by the bank, mm -hmm. done. It's cool. It's cool. So make sure you follow Mark so you can get the updates on the flying bike as well as the other stuff that he's doing, like yeah, choose it, his music, everything like that. But Mark, I appreciate you for getting yeah, on the show. Thank it's been a you, pleasure talking you, with you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, asking questions. Definitely appreciate you guys on Mark's feed asking questions and tuning in as well. Yeah, 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 this yeah, is yeah. Town of Tuesdays. I'm your host, Kai Speaks, aka Mr. Two and Five to Three and we out. Yeah.